You said that last year you completed a journey you set out on 15 years ago. How did you accomplish this? Well, 15 years ago, we set out on a journey to create one core banking platform for our consumer and small business businesses across the United States. I would say where we are as a company right now is, is, and these are key to our success, probably three things. We have a very clear strategy and behaving in an integrated way across our various businesses is part of that strategy. Um, we have made significant investments in our team, our technology, our operations team, and, and executive team overall in the last three to five years, and that's made a, a huge difference. And we're very focused. Um, this is a management team and a set of technologists and operating professionals that are laser focused on executing against that 15-year goal. Um, no small feat because as a company like ours would grow up in acquisition mode, particularly here in the United States, um, we have eight of everything. Um, in fact, uh, some of our back office systems and capabilities and technology platforms seem to have operated by the motto of, you know, more is always better. And yet for simplification and for integration, we know that to be exactly the opposite of the truth. So over the last 12 months, we've completed the last part of our geographic consolidation. Um, in the fourth quarter of last year, we completed the merger of our Northwest platforms into the rest of the United States, and then in May of this year, completed the California transition. And let me just give you a sense of what that means. 1.3 million, uh, million hours of code writing time, just to do California alone. To do California alone, it's 10 million customers and 19 and a half million accounts, all impacted and all needing to be transitioned from one platform to another, basically over, uh, over two weekends. But the impact of all of that is extremely meaningful, not only to our customers who get much better capabilities um, and therefore buy more from us, which is what it's all about, and we do a much better job of serving their needs, but it's really important to us from a tech perspective because we retire applications, in this case 110 in the California transition alone. We retire non-standard products. So think of the productivity impact of having 200 products come off the platform, out of the manuals that we have to train people on, and out of the customer service capabilities that they have to have and we have to produce in technology. So the impact of what we've done um, may seem seamless, may appear to be new capabilities um, in some of our geographies, but the impact of what we've done extends not only from the front office, but all the way to our basic operating functions every day. What were the most important ways you simplified your processes and applications? Well, when I think about simplification, I think about it um, the way people talk about recycling right now. I think about it as rebuild, replace, and reduce. So first and most important is simplification, streamlining. Um, as, we, as we modernize what it is we're doing, we're more effective if we're doing fewer platform modernizations than more. Um, we rebuild the systems that we have that are sort of at the mid-range of their life cycle that can still be commercially viable and contemporary, but do require investment. And then for some of our platforms, in a couple of cases, we've got platforms that perform very well every day, but are on 30-year-old technology that if we know one thing, we know won't take us into the future. So we, and in those cases, we fully replace those platforms. And the idea is to get all of what we do to a simple, modern state so that whatever the technology of the future holds for us in terms of how to make banking real for clients and customers, that our foundation can support um, the contemporary use and contemporary application of technology. The bank's technology operations are now where you want them to be. What's next? Well, as any technologist will tell you, um, it's, a, it's not easy to define the exact moment where everything is where you want it to be. Um, a good technologist is like a good artist. It's always actually a work in progress. And I admire that about the work that we're doing a lot. As I think, though, about what the future holds, and as we get to this moment where much of the um, rebuilding and replacement and reduction has gone on, when I think about that, there are several different places where our attention turns immediately. Um, first, and this is really real for us today, information security. Um, any large corporation, and we're no exception, is the subject of attacks 
literally every single day and in volumes that are in fact staggering. And ensuring that information security techniques and capabilities and defenses stay ahead of the capabilities of those that are attacking us is really at the heart of what a financial institution is all about. So staying on, in fact, not staying on, but leading the cutting edge of information security is one thing. Um, there's clearly a huge mobility play. Uh, we're in the process of figuring out for ourselves what that means. Where do we want technology to leapfrog us in terms of our capabilities? Where is it better for us to be part of an industry solution? But when you think about everything from where the next generation of our clients and customers uh, bank, which is not in the teller line or, or not um, sitting behind a desk, when you think about that and you think about the future of what the technology can do, there's clearly a leapfrogging mobility play to be had. Um, I think there's also a, a big set of things we're working on around data. It's why the conversation about artificial intelligence is so important because I don't really like the term big data. It means too many different things to too many different people. What it is all about for us is taking the massive amounts of information we have, doing the right analytics and modeling, using technology to do that so it's not left to the individual, and then delivering capabilities into the marketplace or ways of serving customers that, in fact, create value. So in that notion of data and information and artificial intelligence and really making that commercial, there's a thing of beauty to be had. I believe that. Um, we've got to continue to uh, not just uh, reshape, but completely remake the cost curve. Um, the cost of what it takes to produce technological solutions um, or to improve operating platforms is huge. And in a narrow margin marketplace, as all um, financial institutions are, uh, that kind of development will be very hard to sustain. And so finding new ways to create value, but also to do it in an efficient way and yet allow for creativity, man, we have to be all over that. Um, and then I guess what I'd tell you is the most important thing that takes is talent. I laugh all the time. I can program, in fact, in COBOL, um, which is a skill that is completely and totally useless. Um, what I can tell you about all the languages in which we're programming today are in 15 years, which is about the legacy time frame of the work we're doing today. I mean, it has to last, have that kind of duration. What I know is what it will take to produce technological advancement in 15 years is not what it takes today. And so rather than hire the person that can do COBOL or the person that can do Python today, it's our job to hire great talent who can do incredible problem solving, adapt to the technological capabilities of the future, and use those to deliver in the marketplace. Catherine Besant, thank you. Thank you.